Hi, I'm Johnny from UltimatePaperMache.com and last week I showed you how I put the aluminum foil over a cardboard pattern to make the armature from Nisa. She's a alpaca that I got to meet at the Blue Dasher farm up north of Brookings, South Dakota last June, I think it was. And this week I started working on the paper mache clay. I got a little carried away. I put on a lot thicker amount of paper mache than I normally do because I put the aluminum foil on her neck very loosely. I actually thought it would be kind of nice because it would have lumps of, of wool kind of sticking out. But after I got started on it, I looked at some more photographs that, and that's just not the way it grows out. And so I changed my mind, but that meant that there was a whole lot of dips that had to be filled in with the paper mache clay. So it's taking a long time to dry. But let me show you how I did it. It was kind of fun. And while I'm showing you, I'm going to go ahead and answer a whole bunch of the questions that I've gotten in about paper mache clay. The first question I got this week was about a some paper mache clay that was put over the outside of a ceramic bowl. And when it dried, it cracked, especially right around the edges. And I let them know that it probably started cracking at the edges because that's the part that would be naturally um, drying fastest. And because it was shrinking as it dries, but the bowl doesn't shrink, at all the paper mache has to crack. Any water-based material will shrink because the water is evaporating and the rest of the material just fills in and it, it just shrinks a little bit. Not much but a little but enough to crack if it's put over something really hard like a ceramic bowl or a glass bottle. The next question is how long does it take to dry in the bowl? In other words how long do you have to work with it before it gets too dry to, to sculpt with it anymore? And Normally, you can keep going, I, I would say for, oh gosh, four or five hours usually. I, I have never really had a problem with it drying out in the bowl. This time, it, it seemed to dry out just a little bit faster in the bowl. I wasn't keeping it covered. I think it's because the Gorilla Wood Glue that I'm using for this particular batch um, with the Worth Joint Compound, I think that the Gorilla Wood Glue it was drying a little bit faster than the Elmer's does, I think, I think. And so after like two or three hours, I noticed that there were a couple of spots on the top of the bowl of paper mache clay that was getting a little bit different color and the, the the pieces were just kind of stiff. So I turned it over because the, the bottom, of course, was still perfectly wet and I started covering it with plastic and that, that was fine. Like I said, normally when I'm using the original paper mache clay recipe, it'll last for four or five hours. I've, I've just never had it get to try to work while it's still in the bowl. But how long does it take to dry after you're all done and after it's on the sculpture? That really depends on how thick it is. This, like I said, I put it on really thick. I wasn't expecting to fill in all those holes, but I did. <laughs> and it's still not entirely dry. You can still tell that it isn't dry because when you push on it, you get a little bit of give to it. Not much, it feels dry on the outside, but it should be absolutely rock solid and it's not. So it still isn't dry. The, the upper part on her, I put on a really huge amount of paper mache clay on the top knot, uh, you know, her hairdo up on top. That's probably going to take three or four days to dry completely. I'll leave it in front of the fan and I'll make it dry as fast as possible, but it doesn't, it's not going to be fast, that's for sure. You never want to paint it if there's any possibility that there's still any uh, moisture in it at all because that will trap uh, mold spores and they will get out eventually and ruin your sculpture. So never paint it until it's absolutely totally dry, but it's gonna depend on how thickly you apply it and how much humidity there is in the air, whether or not you're putting it in front of a fan. There's a lot of variables, so I can't say exactly how long it's gonna take, but we do know it's not fast. <laughs> no paper mache is, is gonna dry really fast. It's, it's just not an instant project but a fan really, really helps. A lot of people have wondered why you can't use DAP or Worth the Joint Compound with the Elmer's glue. Um, why does it turn all rubbery and lumpy? And I think they're looking for like a technical reason. <laughs> and I don't know, I think it's because of boron. The, the boron is used in a lot of construction type 
things like um, the blow-in insulation that's made out of cellulose that almost always has some boron added to it. It, it helps keep uh, bugs out, I think. It stops the mold from growing and I think it's even a fireproofing material. I might be wrong about that. I'm, at this point I might be making it up, but I don't know. But I do know that if you mix Elmer's glue with borax you know from the store you can make flubber for kids and and because that's kind of what we're what happens when you try to use dap joint compound with the elmer's glue I, i'm assuming that it is boron uh it's not a bad thing to put in the joint compound but it, it just doesn't work with elmer's but we do know now that it will work with the gorilla wood glue so both dap and worth can be used for paper mache clay if you use Gorilla Wood Glue instead of Elmer's Glue. Now there might be other glues that would work too, um, we just don't know. And we also have a, a video out that shows you how to make your own glue if you can't find Gorilla Wood Glue or you just want to you know, test it out and see what happens. So you can actually make your own glue if you want to and I'll put a, a link to that video uh, down below. How heavy is it? I weighed the grizzly bear mask. It was made with one layer of cereal box cardboard and a thin layer of paper mache clay. A little bit thicker than usual because I did add some for fur. It's not as thick definitely as the alpaca but it's still enough to make a nice texture and it weighs totally 244 grams. So it's really light. It's definitely wearable. So if that's what you're concerned about, is it too heavy to actually use for a mask? Um, no, it's not. It's, it's really uh, quite light. Uh, again, it will depend on how thick you apply it though. If you really gob it on heavy, <laughs> like I did on the alpaca, then it would probably uh, weigh the mask down a little bit too much. Do you have to use toilet paper? No. You can use any kind of paper you want to as long as you soak it long enough so that it, the fibers will fall apart. There's some kinds of paper that will never fall apart because they've got that coating on it like the really slick colored paper in nice magazines. That just, you just can't use it for any kind of paper mache. But um, recycled newspaper, uh, copy paper, egg cartons I think will work. Maybe you could soak corrugated cardboard long enough to mm, turn it into mush but that would be a lot of work. I, I wouldn't try it. But, uh, I, I'm not sure that would be worth the, the effort but it's possible that it would work. It just depends on whether or not you can get the fibers to fall apart because that's what acts as the reinforcing. If they're if they're all clumped together you're not going to be able to smooth it out well enough to make something look good. Someone recently asked why her paper mache clay came out so wet that might have happened because there was just too much water left with the toilet paper. Uh, it's, it's a little bit difficult to know exactly how much to squeeze out. And so if you do end up with just a little bit more water than you needed to, you might have to add a little bit more flour than the recipe calls for. It will still work. Uh, it, does, it actually doesn't hurt anything to add more flour. You could even use a little bit of cornstarch if you wanted to. But if that happens to you a lot, then go ahead and use the gram measurement recipe instead. I'll go ahead and put a link to that down below because that recipe shows you exactly how much the toilet paper should weigh after you squeeze all the water out and that makes a huge difference in making sure that it's always the same every single time you make it. Can you use plaster instead of flour? We do have a a recipe using the plaster instead of the joint compound, but I have never actually mixed together both the joint compound and plaster. It would probably work, but it might stiffen up in the bowl. I'm, I just don't know if that's going to work or not. You can certainly try it. Other people have suggested that you can use talcum instead of flour and people have suggested powdered marble or uh, calcium carbonate if it's if it's powdered up finely enough you can use that instead of flour. How do I clean the utensils? I just wash them out in the sink unless you're using something with plaster in it. Like I said there is one recipe um, that does use plaster of Paris instead of drywall joint compound and if you use that recipe you have to rinse it outside. You, you can't put any plaster in your plumbing but the normal ordinary paper mache clay dump all the extra that you have that was left over in the garbage and then wash your utensils and your bowl in the sink. It won't hurt anything. Someone asked recently if we have to put paper in paper mache and another person said 
that she was told that if you leave the paper out of the paper mache clay that it will be smoother. That That's not going to work. It's going to crack. If you just use glue and drywall joint compound, that's not paper mache clay. It does work actually as a do-it-yourself gesso. Just paint it on in a in really thin layer. That, that doesn't usually crack, although if you put it on too thickly, it will. Can you use paper mache clay in a mold? I have tried it and it didn't work. There's two reasons why not. One is because of the paper fibers. I don't know if somehow or another they caused air to get trapped underneath the paper mache clay. I tried pressing it down really tight into a silicone mold and it just didn't make a good casting. And you also do have to put it in there really thinly because if you didn't it would never get dry it, because it's only got air on one side if you're putting in a mold. So you have to put it in really thinly and when you do that <laughs> it, it starts to shrink and it shrinks away from the wall of the mold and it, and it distorts the shape. It just didn't work very well. Now I have had been told that people do use the air dry clay recipe on my website in small silicone molds that are made like for candy, really little ones. And they do say that that works. I haven't tried it, but they, they do say that it works just fine. You also don't want to put it in a plaster mold because it'll stick to the plaster and you'd never get it out. I don't think it would ruin the plaster mold. If you want to use a pourable material in a plaster mold, Liquishe works really, really good. It's a commercial product. I do not know how to make it without just, you know, going to the store and buying some. But if you want to use um, plaster molds and you want it to be paper mache, Liquishe is absolutely perfect. I, I really love that stuff. And last question, how do you make it waterproof? You don't really. You can put a, a plastic material or rubber material over it but you can't make the paper mache clay itself waterproof because everything that's that's in the material uh, absorbs water. It's kind of like trying to make a, a printed copy of the newspaper waterproof. How do you do that? <laughs> you have to encase it entirely in something that is waterproof because the, the paper itself never will be. Most of the things that you put over paper mache clay to try to, to keep it from getting wet, like marine varnish for instance, it, it will still get a little bit soft if you put it out for like for Halloween decorations, but you can usually bring it back inside of the house and let it dry out and it will get solid again, but it, but it just doesn't completely waterproof the material. Now that's been my opinion for years, but there are actually some guest posts on my website that kind of disagree with me. <laughs> and, and I do want you to go check those out. The first one is a guest post by Linda Bunnell. She made a toadstool that she put outside in northern Florida. She made it out of paper mache clay and a lot of other stuff. She explains how she did it in her guest post and then she sealed it with Rust-Oleum leak seal. And the last time I talked to her about it, it had been outside in Florida and all that rain for over two years and it was still doing fine. So, so do check out her post. I'll put a link to it down below. Another guest post was sent in several years ago by Warren Eglinton. He told us about a version of paper mache clay that he made for some giant pots. He put some Portland cement in it. I did some experiments with his recipe last year and I put my little toad outside. It, it stayed outside for a full winter and half of a summer and was doing just fine. It still hasn't, you know, a year and a half is not really long enough to really test an outdoor sculpture material though. There are other materials that have been tested and used for much longer. And that brings me to the last guest post that I really want you to see. Eileen Gallagher shows us how she made some outdoor sculptures with a product called Paltaya. It works very much like paper mache clay. You can use it over crumpled foil armatures just like I did the alpaca. As a matter of fact, I learned how to make foil armatures from the Paltaya website. So it works a lot like paper mache clay. It's just as easy to use, but it's been tested for years and it is definitely an outdoor product. It costs more money, unfortunately. But if you're going to make something that you're spending a whole lot of time on and you really want it to be like a family heirloom, you want it to stay in your garden for a really long time, or if you want to sell it, I definitely recommend that you check out Eileen's guest post and then go look at the Paltaya website. 
So now, as soon as this dries, and like I said, I'm gonna leave it, oh, almost a week probably. It's gonna take a long time for this one to dry. I'm not too worried about it because the air is so dry right now. We've actually got some fire warnings out because it, the humidity is so low. So that's gonna help. But it's still, I mean, you saw me put really thick layer of paper mache clay on there. It's gonna take a long time. So hopefully I can paint it next week, but I'm not sure. I do have to get my ram done. So maybe in two weeks time, I'll go ahead and paint her. I'm gonna put something over the eyes. I'm not really sure what. I haven't, haven't decided I'm gonna do some sort of experiment on the eyes. <laughs> and she does get some white eyelashes, of course, when she's all done. Now, if you wanna make your own alpaca, hopefully you have already downloaded the pattern. It's just a, a flat silhouette, so you could even make your own if you want to, but you can uh, download the pattern along with all the photographs that I used as models. And I'm gonna put a link to that PDF down below. You can go ahead and get that. So if you'd like to make your own alpaca, you can go ahead and use my pattern. Go make something <laughs> and then come visit me, ultimatepapermache.com. I'll see you there.